Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, we'll talk about alpha-methyldopa, cardiac pharmacology, baby. The best explanation ever, plus a mnemonic. But before we start, please understand that alpha-methyldopa is a centrally acting sympatholytic and it's alpha-2 agonist, which makes perfect sense because alpha-2 is anti-sympathetic. When you stimulate the alpha-2 receptor, you will inhibit the sympathetic activity, which is really cool if you suffer from high blood pressure. It's really paramount that you watch the entire video because in this video, I have something from Picmonic. They have a gift for you. Hypertension. You have primary hypertension and secondary hypertension. Primary hypertension is idiopathic. We are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology. Secondary is secondary to something else. That's why we have known causes. It could be secondary to Cushing's, Kahn's, pheochromocytoma, renal disease, coarctation of the aorta, etc., etc. Primary hypertension, by the way, is the majority of cases. Most of the time, we do not know what is causing the hypertension. We know some risk factors, but the exact cause, we have no idea. So why do you call them risk factors and not causes? Because correlation is not the same as causation. What's the most common symptom? Uh, most patients are asymptomatic, but that's not the answer to my question. I asked what's the most common symptom? Usually headache. Hypertension is really ugly. It can increase your risk of aortic dissection. And if you have watched my video on Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase and Company, we have talked about aortic dissection before. Great. What is the purpose of antihypertensive drugs? Let's start at the beginning. Let's go back to square one. Friedrich Nietzsche said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Medicosis perfectionalis says, he who has a why to the antihypertensive medications can bear almost any mechanism. So, how do you lower the blood pressure? Okay, first, you understand what the flip the blood pressure is. Blood pressure equals cardiac output times the total peripheral resistance. The new name is systemic vascular resistance. Great. And then the cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. If you substitute heart rate and stroke volume for cardiac output, you get the equation like this, nice and clean. Blood pressure equals heart rate times stroke volume times systemic vascular resistance. And by the way, the systemic vascular resistance is inversely proportional to the radius to the fourth power. In other words, when you constrict your artery, what's going to happen to the radius? It will decrease. What's going to happen to the systemic vascular resistance? It will increase a lot. And when the systemic vascular resistance increases a lot, what's going to happen to your blood pressure? It's going to go up a lot. Therefore, if you want to treat high blood pressure, what should you do? You should lower the total peripheral resistance. How do you lower the systemic vascular resistance? By increasing the radius and dilating the vessel. How would you dilate the vessel? By inhibiting the alpha-1 receptor, because normally alpha-1 stimulation will constrict the vessel. We do not want to do this. We want to inhibit this alpha-1 receptor. How do you inhibit it? Get it from the root. What's the root? norepinephrine acting on the freaking alpha-1 receptor. How do we inhibit the release of norepinephrine? That's the job of the alpha methyl dopa, baby. That's the topic of today's video. So, in order for you to lower the blood pressure, you should lower the cardiac output. Great. Lower the systemic vascular resistance. This is the afterload because if this is your beautiful heart, this is your systemic vascular resistance. The afterload because it's coming after the heart. But this is called the preload because it's coming before the heart. This is the venous return, returning to your heart. We call this preload. And then the heart will pump against a resistance called the systemic vascular resistance, hashtag afterload. How do you decrease the systemic vascular resistance? You decrease the vasoconstriction. How do you decrease the venous return coming to the heart? You decrease the blood volume, hashtag diuretics. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. In my video on aortic dissection and Jamie Dimon, I've talked about the drugs that are used in hypertensive urgency or emergency. Do you see alpha methyl dopa here? No, because it's not used in hypertensive urgency or emergency. At least not the first choice by any stretch of the imagination. In my previous video on the hypersegmented neutrophil, I have made a polite request that someone supports me so that I reach 100. Two nice people actually supported me yesterday and now we are 101. Adam and Adelina, thank you so much. You have no idea how happy I was yesterday. Really, thank you. The idea that there are some people who care about me is just fascinating. Thank you. Please help support my channel at patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you in advance.
So how do we battle the hypertension? It freaking depends. Is it primary hypertension or secondary hypertension? What if it's secondary hypertension, secondary to pheochromocytoma? Then the treatment is to freaking remove it. Yeah, remove the tumor and boom, the patient is happy and healthy. If it's primary hypertension, however, it's complicated as they say in New York. We have lifestyle modification. When it fails, we go to drugs. If the world were perfect, you will just say to the patient, hey, please follow this new strict diet and all of the patients will follow it and all of the patients will improve. Of course, this is la la land. In real life, it's really hard to stick to a diet for a long period of time. And even if you do this, sometimes your high blood pressure does not improve. I understand it's hard. So what should you do? Lifestyle modification. You decrease the weight. By every 10 kilograms of weight you lose, your systolic blood pressure should decrease between 5 and 20. Let's keep it easy. So for every 10 kilograms you lose, your systolic blood pressure will decrease by 10. So for every 1 kilogram you lose, your systolic blood pressure will decrease by 1. So let's say that your blood pressure was 140 over whatever. And then you lost 20 kilograms, which is amazing. Now your blood pressure should become 120. Normal. That's great. And you also decrease the salt in your diet. This is called the DASH diet. But the DASH diet is not just about the salt. It's about low salt, low saturated fat, increased amount of fruits and vegetables, and aerobic exercise. But then when everything fails and the bleep hits the fan, you go to medications. Speaking of medications, antihypertensive drugs are numerous. Sympatholytics, direct vasodilators, diuretics, calcium channel blockers, and the RAS modulators, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system modulators. All of them are contraindicated in pregnancy, by the way. Let's focus on the sympatholytics because this is today's topic. What do you mean by sympatholytic? Lytic is to destroy, lysis destroy the sympathetic nervous system. That sounds great. Centrally acting medications or peripherally acting medications. Centrally acting medication will decrease the release of the norepinephrine. Peripherally acting medications will let the norepinephrine be released. However, it's not gonna function, baby. It's not gonna happen. That's why we call it peripherally acting medication. Centrally acting, we have two categories. The alpha-2 agonist and the VMAT inhibitors. Why alpha-2 agonist? Because alpha-2 is anti-sympathetic. When you stimulate it, you're anti-sympathetic, which is awesome because we would like to be anti-sympathetic, i.e. anti-vasoconstriction. Okay, baby, let's hit that sympathetic in the nuts. How would you do that? Give an alpha-2 agonist or stimulator such as the glorious alpha-methyldopa. We divide your autonomic control into nervous and hormonal. Nervous is sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic is today's topic. Parasympathetic is not today's topic. You know, this was fight and flight, but this is rest, digest, and etc. I am just curious, Medicosis, why would you like to be anti-sympathetic or sympatholytic? I'll tell you, my man, because if you let the sympathetic function, it will release norepinephrine. Norepinephrine will act on alpha-1 receptors and beta-1 receptor. If you let it act on alpha-1 receptor, it will lead to vasoconstriction. Of course, vasoconstriction will increase your systemic vascular resistance, which will increase your blood pressure. If you let it act on the beta-1 receptor, GS, it will lead to increase your heart rate, which will increase the cardiac output, which was in will increase the blood pressure. If you happen to suffer from high blood pressure, stimulating the sympathetic nervous system is not the best idea ever. Okay, let's kick the sympathetic in the gonads. How would you do it? You can do it centrally by decreasing the release of norepinephrine, or you can do it peripherally by decreasing the action of norepinephrine. How do you decrease it centrally? Let me tell you the story. First, normally, how do you release norepinephrine? First, you need norepinephrine to be in the vesicle. Where did it come from? Oh, it's a very long story. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, dopa, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. But if you're talking about a nerve ending, norepinephrine and stop. You cannot produce epinephrine from the nerve ending. If you are talking about the adrenal medulla, yes, indeed, you can secrete epinephrine. Why cannot you secrete norepinephrine into epinephrine? I've talked about this in a previous video in cardiology or cardiac pharmacology. Okay, medicosis, we get it. How do we inhibit the release of the norepinephrine? You stimulate, you stimulate the alpha-2 receptor. 
and then the alpha-2 will inhibit the release of the norepinephrine. Mission accomplished. You just give me something to stimulate my alpha-2, hashtag alpha methyl dopa, and then I will inhibit the release of norepinephrine. I will never vasoconstrict. In fact, I will vasodilate. I will never increase your heart rate. I might be able to cause some slight bradycardia. Great! Before we kick the sympathetic nervous system in the testicles, first you understand the alpha-1 and the beta-1 sympathetic adrenergic receptors. How do they function? Alpha-1 will constrict your vessel, beta-1 will increase your heart rate. Let's do it, baby! Alpha-1 adrenergic GQ coupled phospholipase C. If it's phospholipase C, it's gonna destroy this nasty thing into IP3. This is the third letter in the alphabet, and this is the third number in the uh, num number of it, whatever. And then it's going to increase the calcium. Where? In your vessel, baby, in your smooth muscle, leading to vasoconstriction. When you vasoconstrict, you increase the systemic vascular resistance, which will increase your blood pressure, which is bad. That's why we would like to inhibit the release of norepinephrine, so no one will act on the alpha-1 adrenergic sympathetic receptor. Great, how about the beta-1? Normally beta-1 is GS-coupled. Adenylate cyclase, give me the ATP. Have you noticed everything here is an A? Yep, adenylate cyclase, ATP, cyclic A and P, protein kinase A, and then you will increase the calcium in the heart, leading to increase the heart rate, which will increase the cardiac output, which will increase the blood pressure. Of course, this is bad. We like to lower your high blood pressure. That's why we will give you alpha methyl dopa to inhibit the release of norepinephrine so that we leave the beta-1 receptor crying and begging us and we will not listen. Because we don't give a rip about a receptor, we care about the flesh and blood patient. You can kick the sympathetic in the ball centrally or peripherally. Methyl dopa will accomplish this centrally because it's an alpha-2 agonist. Today we'll talk about alpha methyl dopa. If you'd like to know more about the other medications, check out my course called Cardiac Pharmacology available on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. What happens when you inhibit the sympathetic nervous system? A lot, actually. First, now the parasympathetic is unopposed, hashtag rest and digest. It will increase the motility and the secretion of your GI tract, which will lead to diarrhea, urinary incontinence, stool incontinence, like this is severe, I'm exaggerating, and increased secretion by the submucosal plexus, and this will increase gastric acid, this will worsen your peptic ulcer disease. Motility by the myenteric plexus, secretion with the submucosal plexus. And then, when you inhibit the sympathetic nervous system, you will decrease the norepinephrine, centrally and peripherally. Tell me more about decreasing the norepinephrine centrally, because these are the side effects of what? alpha methyl dopa. Centrally sedation, drowsiness, depression, and decreased libido. Peripherally, you now have inhibited the alpha-1, which will reduce your systemic vascular resistance, which will decrease your blood pressure, which is awesome. However, you may suffer from reflex tachycardia. You may suffer from postural hypertension, hypotension, because no one is constricting your vessels. And you might suffer from retrograde ejaculation. I would rather jump in the freaking creek. And then you inhibit the beta-1, which will reduce your heart rate, cardiac output, and blood pressure. Great, but rebound hypertension on withdrawal can happen. Alpha methyl dopa, it's a pro-drug. Translation, it's an inactive drug. But why would you give me an inactive drug, doctor? Just calm down, sunshine. Let me continue. It's a pro-drug. It's inactive. However, once you swallow that lovely tablet, it's going to enter your body. In your body, this inactive compound, it's going to be converted into an active compound called alpha-methyl-norepinephrine. What a great name. It's an alpha-2 agonist, great presynaptic. When you're alpha-2 agonist, you will inhibit the release of norepinephrine. When you inhibit the release of norepinephrine, alpha-1 receptor and beta-1 receptor will suffer. Good job. This will decrease the vascular tone and decrease the heart rate. Great. Both of them are great if you have to happen to have hypertension. alpha methyl dopa is wonderful for hypertension in pregnancy, as well as gestational hypertension. If a lady was normal, did not have high blood pressure before pregnancy and did not have a high blood pressure in the first trimester and then i think after 20 weeks or something she developed high blood pressure during pregnancy what do you call this you call this gestational hypertension because it happened during gestation however let's say that a woman had hypertension and then she became pregnant 
and then she still have hypertension. Do you call this gestational hypertension? No, we do not call it gestational hypertension. So what do we call it? It's just a hypertension patient who became pregnant. Nothing fancy. Alpha methyl dopa is the number one, i.e. it's the drug of choice for hypertension in pregnancy as long as this hypertension is mild or moderate. If it's severe hypertension, i.e. hypertensive urgency or emergency, go back to the previous slide because we did not use alpha methyl dopa. What are the side effects of alpha methyl dopa? Go back to the previous slide and remember sedation, drowsiness, decrease libido, depression, all of the stuff. Yep, plus drug-induced hepatitis. Expect high LFTs such as AST and ALT. Those are the liver transaminases. Also, it can lead to hemolytic freaking anemia. Woo! Is it extravascular or intravascular? It's extravascular. Translation, it's in the spleen. That destruction happens in the spleen. If the destruction happens in the spleen, you can blame the splenic macrophages. Why did the splenic macrophage become so active? Because it recognizes an IgG on the RBCs. And this is an antibody. Something is weird here. Let's destroy this dead gum RBC, man. And this is called warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Why warm? Because it's an IgG. If you remember my mnemonic, remember G is circular like a sun. Look at this G, man. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this G inside the sun. Just beautiful, man. Beautiful. So it looks like a sun. So G is the warm. How about the cold? The cold is IgM because IgM will look like a snowflake because it's a pentamer. It has five pieces. It's a terrible looking snowflake. So now I have uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia and it's extravascular and it's warm. Is it Coombs positive or Coombs negative? It's Coombs positive. Please be more specific. Is it the direct Coombs test or the indirect Coombs test? It's the direct Coombs test, also known as the direct anti-globulin test. Other side effects of alpha methyl dopa include drug-induced lupus. Whenever you have drug-induced lupus, expect to see positive antihistone antibodies in the plasma. And it can lead to hyperprolactinemia, which will lead to galacteria. And bad stuff, suppress GnRH, which will suppress FSH and LH. If you happen to be a male, you will suffer from impotence and gynecomastia. I would rather jump in the freaking creek. And if you happen to be a female, you may suffer from amenorrhea. Is this going to be primary amenorrhea or secondary amenorrhea? Please let me know the answer in the comment section and explain why. Here is alpha methyl dopa. Messes up with the RH on the surface of your red blood cell. IgG comes antigen antibody complex. The macrophage and the spleen recognize that by their beautiful FC receptor. And then it's on, baby. This RBC will be destroyed. This is called autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Why autoimmune? Because we are destroying ourselves. We are destroying our own RBCs. If you have watched my previous playlist on hematology, you remember extravascular hemolysis. You either have an inclusion or an abnormally shaped ribble cell or an antibody. Oh, so what's the scenario here? You have an abnormal antibody. You can blame the alpha methyl dopa. And this antibody on the surface of your red blood cell, antigen antibody complex, before you know it, the splenic macrophage jump on the red blood cell and destroy it. The red blood cell has what? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin will jump onto the haptoglobin. The haptoglobin will be consumed. Expect to see a low plasma level of haptoglobin in this patient. And then the RBC had LDH. You'll have increased LDH in the, in the serum because the LDH that was in the red blood cell now is in the plasma. LDH, of course, lactate and pyre, you know this stuff. And then the red blood cell has what? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has what? Heme and globin. Heme has what? Iron and protoporphyrin. Protoporphyrin will become an unconjugated bilirubin. It will go to the liver. But since we destroyed lots of red blood cells, baby, expect to see a humongous amount of unconjugated bilirubin in the liver. The liver will try its best to conjugate them. It will slightly conjugate some of them, but of course the capacity of the liver has been overwhelmed and you will see some conjugated bilirubin, but the main problem is increased unconjugated bilirubin. Hashtag hyperbilirubinemia, hashtag jaundice, hashtag yellowish discoloration of the sclera and mucous membrane and skin. Please remember when you examine the patient for jaundice, use sunlight. Do not use your incandescent light bulb. Stop it. Let's talk about the direct Coombs test. What's the goal? Because he who has a Y to live can bear almost anyhow. To detect the antibodies were on the surface of the red blood cells or in the plasma. 
on the surface of the RBCs. Great. And then when you detect them, what's going to happen? Agglutination baby, hashtag antigen antibody complex. And this is called a positive direct Coombs test. Why did it happen? Because the alpha methyl dopa messed the RH on the, or introduced the RH on the surface of the RBCs. This is a weird kind of RH. It's not normal. And then what's going to happen? IgG against the RH and then an antigen antibody complex. This will be detected and you have a positive direct antiglobulin test. If you remember my previous video on the difference between direct Coombs tests and indirect Coombs tests, I've told you that direct Coombs tests can be used to diagnose what? Drug-induced hemolysis. And alpha methyl dopa is a freaking drug-induced hemolysis. It's also a drug-induced lupus, but let's focus on drug-induced hemolysis. Is it extravascular or intravascular? It's freaking extravascular. Is it warm or cold? It's warm. Is it Coombs positive or Coombs negative? It's Coombs positive. Please be specific. Direct Coombs. That's how medicine is done, otherwise it's not worth it. Now the easy part of the video. Mnemonic for alpha methyl dopa is clinical use. Methyl dopa, MA for pregnant mama. Indeed, it's the drug of choice. Whether this is gestational hypertension or a hypertensive woman who became pregnant. Another mnemonic for alpha methyl dopa side effects. The rule of twos. Two arrows pointing upwards and two signs denoting positive. Okay, two arrows pointing upwards. Increase LFTs, including AST and ALT. Those are liver enzymes. Increase prolactin, which will lead to galactoria and bad things. If you are a man, gynecomastia and impotence. If you are a woman, amenorrhea. And then what are the two positives? Positive direct Coombs test. Positive antihistone antibodies. Alpha methyl dopa has never been easier. Now let's combine the clinical use with the side effects in one slide. Okay, two arrows pointing upwards. S, S, and O, O. S, 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 G, O, T, and S, G, P, T. Those are the old names for AST and ALT, the liver enzymes. And increase, forgive my language, this is hyperprolactinemia. And then two positive signs, positive Coombs test, especially that direct Coombs test or direct antiglobulin test, positive antihistone antibodies. And then two ma, so two arrows, two positives, and two ma. Mama, when she's pregnant, it can lead to hemolytic anemia. What are the drugs that are used for hypertension in pregnancy? Okay, that's there is a great mnemonic, and this mnemonic came from Ellie. She's a great doctor in New York. So, thank you so much, Ellie. Okay, what are these drugs? Hypertensive moms love nifedipine. So, hypertensive hydralazine. Moms, alpha methyl dopa, love labetalol, and nifedipine is nifedipine. Obstetrician, beware. Alpha methyl dopa is for mild or moderate hypertension. Have you noticed mild and moderate M? But hydralazine is for the severe. If you are sophisticated, the Z sounds like an S. Severe hypertension. But do not do two mnemonics. Just remember one of them and the other one is the other one. Otherwise, in the exam, you will mix them together and it's, it's just not worth it. The video is not over yet. I still have a mnemonic for you from Picmonic. But before we go, we have a free cardiac pharmacology video on my website, medicosisperfectionandis.com. If you want to get these 50 cardiac pharmacology videos, they are available on my website. Use the promo code CARDIOFARM50 for a 50% discount, only for 11 students until the 31st. So we have talked about the drugs that should be used if mama is pregnant and has hypertension. What are the drugs that should not be used if mama is pregnant with hypertension? ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and aliskyrin. In other words, do not use the renin angiotensin aldosterone system modulator. Do not use them. They are contraindicated in pregnancy. And here is a bonus point that has nothing to do with pregnancy. ACE, ARBs, and aliskyrin can lead to hyperkalemia which kind of makes sense because now aldosterone is history. And this was the story of the glorious alpha methyl dopa, a very ancient drug, but it's still useful. The great people at Picmonic are giving you guys two weeks of free premium access, yes, free to the entire medicine library. See the link in the description below. So what is Picmonic? Picmonic, they are pictured mnemonics and they are awesome. For instance, let's say we're talking about warfarin. As you know, warfarin inhibits the vitamin K dependent factors of coagulation. So you'll see in the animation, but I cannot show you the animation because of copyright, this war fairy will hit that Viking king with her bazooka. Just to help you remember that, warfarin inhibits the vitamin K dependent factors. 
You watch the animated story, it's absolutely brilliant. And then you learn some medical facts. And then they will ask you a question or a quiz about every single medication in freaking pharmacology and every single organism in dead gum microbiology and the rare genetic diseases. It's just amazing. The amount of medicine that you can master in these two weeks is bonkers. They are not a sponsor of this video, although they should be. I know that many of you are panicking right now, I understand, but here's the difference between student A and student B. Student A decided that ah, just the world is coming to an end and I'm dying, so and they end up watching Netflix and chill. Student B, however, saw this as an opportunity to study because there is no school right now, so let's study medicine. And instead of Netflix and chill, they decided to study fever and chills. Now, which student do you expect to perform better on the exam? Of course, student B, because actions have consequences and when the input is different, the output is different. Student B will have better score. I don't give a rip about your exam score. You'll have a better career, which will be great. And most importantly, you'll be able to provide better patient care. Patients need you. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. Support me here or here. You can email me here. Get my cardiac pharmacology course here. It's on discount and use the promo code CardioPharm50 for another 50% discount. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense.